Oh, yeah, it's going. Recording. You push it again. Well, when you turn it Okay, guys, back to the second here. Are you in? Alright, so continuing on with our Gibo work. So, we introduced the position in the last lesson. Um, now, what we're going to do is be working through essentially different group sets. So, we, yes, starting simple, basics, nothing overly complicated. Um, but a lot of that has to do with your initial setup. Okay, so we're going to go into again our, our basic position. You guys should all be comfortable finding it now. You know what you need to be doing from this position. Again, our basics for right now, more defensive minded, ankle grip, and then just our near side sleeve here, okay? So, one uh, issue that some of the guys in the afternoon were having is when they were working on their sweeps, they were pushing too much at the hip line and that was stunting their ability to extend the person's leg or again, block them effectively from stepping. If I'm blocking the hinge point at the hip, his knee line can still step forward. I have a lot of control over where his torso is, but ultimately he can still move his foot. Okay, if I'm blocking at the knee, it's a lot easier to actually stop him. I have more leverage too to make him step. Okay, so just keep that in mind. So we want to be looking here. All right, so we have our basic position. So we're gonna go for our tripod sweep. This isn't our white belt curriculum, but I want to make sure we touch on it quickly. This is just a really good initial attack. See if your partner is paying attention. That's a big thing. Just balance check them really quickly. All I need to do, make him step, and I'm going to switch my feet. Very key detail though, never put my hook behind first because now I have very little control unless I know how to use my reverse on the heel. So come back. So I kick, so he steps. Don't overdo it though, because I need to build a latch. Foot to the hip first, toes pointing out. So it's a nice strong plant. This way he can't move in on me, he can't pass my guard, as I then catch the back of his knee. So everything pulls. I pull his foot, I pull his knee, I pull his sleeve. But the main source of the sweep is the extension on the hip. I'm pushing that hip back. And like anything, if I push with my butt on the floor, it's only leg power. If I bridge and push, you can get much more power you can lift effectively. So small push, foot to the hip, put behind the knee, elevate your hips, although it's not necessary, and then pull everything else. Balls. Maintain your grips, hands to the mat, my other foot that was hooked behind the knee is on the floor. I'm in the position to do technically. find this a little bit awkward. They, they're so desperate to stay straight on with the partner and they're like, Brian, how do you get past this leg? I get hung up. It's just because you're not turning your chest up. Turn your chest down, it's really easy to set your base. Go right into my partner's leg. Okay? Now, little detail as I mentioned in, even in the white belt curriculum, he pushes, he switches his feet. Ideally, for the tripod sweep, he wants this sweep because I can clear this foot off, which just resets him into the position, which is why, for me, I don't really care. I'll go with this, it still works. I just have to be fast, that's it. So again, if he has this, it's harder for me to then clear that foot off the hip, which again, this is the main source of the sweep, okay? So you guys can work that if you want, but it will take you out of the grip set that we're using, which is again, the Achilles and this first near side sleeve, direct sleeve grip, okay? Push foot to the hip, hook behind the knee, push and pull, technical stand up, and my partner starts to do this. Okay? So that's one, two. Quick reminder. That's cool. Where'd you go? Okay, it's on already. Hey guys, back here. So like I said, the, the push on the hips, the real one, like obviously you can go into this fast, just go ahead and do it quick. Clutch kick. You're not going to be... You're not going to be messing around. The big thing though is don't overdo this kick and then you're like, have nothing. But also if he's too close, like I have no range, like I, I have no actual power to go over there. So I do need to elongate him a bit. And then again, it's just fast. Boop. Make him fall. But this foot on the hip and that clutch foot is going to be important. So moving on. Basic entrance. Kick sit up. So now instead of pushing his leg, and staying on our back, we're gonna chase him. So, as I extend, my chest comes up, my foot comes down, and I replace it with my hand. It's almost like you're mimicking what your foot was doing, making this scooping motion, but realistically, all you're doing is just driving it tight head on the inside. Now, from here, this position, this is where like all the variations and sweeps start to occur. So, since we have this sleep grip, we're running with this one. So I pass it to my inside hand. Now, if 
effectively, when you get this, it's essentially a done deal. Okay, if you can maintain the script, he's essentially swift. If you're worried, like, oh, guys, pulling super hard, yeah, you, you may pop your grip, and then you grab the belt and send you go into a different variation, right? Or you just re-attack this, or you go for this. There's lots of options. But if you're worried about your fingers, if he starts to pull this slowly, you can kind of see here, like, I'm getting blocked. Like, I'm not going to have my hand snap all the way back because it's basically being pinned against his body. So the best you can do is straighten your fingers. Okay, it still hurts, but he's still. So once I get that, grab light side lapel as high as you can, because effectively what I'm trying to do is put him into a front wheel. I want to turn his back to the floor. This will work. I mean, pretty much anything will work. I can even grab on the same arm, but this is the best grip you can get. So this foot's still on the mat to be giving me power. We recently did the lapel version of this, which is easier, but it's less sure to finish. So this one, we're going to stretch more. So I'm going to sit back, and I need to maintain tension here. Never lock out your leg because it's too easy for, for it to slide off or be injured. Slight bend, it's more about the tension that you're creating with this leg, okay? So I stretch back, and then now I'm just going to look towards the front side and tip them over. Now, commonly, you'll follow that momentum. If you're new, you'll end up doing something like this, trying to hunt for mount, but you can see I get all tied up here. Instead, to reset, back off and go to side control. So look for your cross face first. So kicks it up, hug, pass the sleeve over, grab the lapel on the same side, stretch first, don't muscle it, and then I use this leg and just my gaze to force myself to the side. And now from here, I drive for my underhook, I release this arm, and I secure side. One last time. Just so you guys can see. Kicks it up, foot drops here. Common mistake, you come back. Common mistake for you new is to do this. You go under your own leg. You don't want to do that. Okay? Drop it, hug, pass, lapel, and then let's do Okay? One, two. Let's go. Okay, guys, time back to the middle. Two, a lot of you are dropping your foot, which you can get away with, but you gotta, you have to be aggressive, athletic, and fast, okay, if you're going to do that. So kicks it up. Again, I've got my cuff grip, so that way when I pass it over, it's a very direct pass. Whereas if I'm kind of just grabbing, I'm like this, like maybe I fumble for my grip a bit. Whereas if I created that pocket, it's easier to catch the pocket. And again, the most possible reach I have, okay? I don't want to be chasing a grip way up here. So this foot. If I drop my foot, this is fine. It gives me a lot of butt scooting and mobility and everything else, but it also means that he's free to walk now and step and adjust, and most importantly, he's gonna try knee cut, okay? Anytime this leg isn't blocked, if he pushes it down, he's just gonna knee cut on me. Now, with this grip, though, it doesn't matter, okay? Because he's so tangled up. I mean, it does matter, but it's very helpful. So if you can, always maintain contact here. This leg is constantly glued while you continue to fight. It makes your job a lot easier. You can spend more time here, okay? So, with those details being said, we are going to deal with what happens if you lose tension here. Maybe you over pushed, you lose it, or more likely he clears it. And you notice how by getting this sleeve too, it's really, really easy for, or I mean, it's really difficult for him to actually reach. He'll use his elbow, maybe, but he'll probably go with a cross side hand, okay? Now, if this happens, don't freak out. You can try and put your foot back on, but realistically, you weren't hanging out here. You, you have initiated. So don't freak out, continue with your sweep. Pull him down to the mat and maintain your grip. So he'll knee cut on you. And 
probably end up in this posted position here. So a lot of people end up here in the spread. All I need to do to finish this, so long as I still have his sleeve grip, is to knee him in the butt. So it's not a strike. I'm just going to bump him with my thigh forward. And then I let go of the lapel and I come up. I mean, realistically, I can keep it and just muscle it. And then just start to treat this like a half guard finish and just run him over. Okay? So again, partner on top, you're just going to clear the, the knee. Whistle for to the knee. <laughs> Kicks it up. Get all your grips. He clears. Continue. Try and drive his face into the mat. And then when you land here, not over his back. I'm not trying to kick him. Okay, just bump him. That takes his weight off of you. And just run forward. Okay, often, if you just do this and flow through and just continue with your momentum, just do a little bit more speed, he'll sort of just collapse in it. You guys have to be pretty aware to stop this. Most guys will just kind of stumble and fall to their back regardless. Okay? Try that little variation. We got one more. Okay. Got to have time to learn more. Alright, we got one more variation, Chris. Before we just switch tax and hit the floor here. I don't want to spend too much time on this, I just want to give you an example how we can add a, a piece to the exact same sweep. So, again, if he's standing above you without any grips, he's not going to pass your guard. Like, like, there's literally nothing he can do. He has to engage with my legs, okay? So, engage with the legs, that's where your grips start to come in, okay? So, kicks it up. When I get to this point here and I pass the sleeve over, instead of, if I want to guarantee that I'm going to complete my sweep, what I'm going to do is a slight hip back, and then I pivot in for a butterfly hook against the shin. So my knee pointing the opposite direction, basically matching my elbow, and then my foot's a nice hook here. Now I can keep this, but ultimately now I'm going to do a, a bigger sweep. So sorry, Chris. So fall down and then just kick over your head and just toss it back. Okay, Chris exaggerated that quite a bit, but more likely he's going to fall over here. So again, kicks it up, get your sleeve grip, hit back to reset. Again, you can do this with this here. It's a much stronger sweep because you get that power of your leg to actually affect his base a bit more too. Okay? The hardest thing is just hipping in and, and throwing your foot in. Um, the, the biggest thing is don't lean back to try and give yourself space. You actually have to like fall forward to get that pivot in room. Okay, and this is where that foot's gonna drop in, but like I said, this is a more aggressive version of it, and you need that mobility of packing that foot down. Go back up, kick, or keep it down and try and kick too. Does it open up the counter a bit more? Alright guys, give that a real quick try. One, two. It's like two minutes. That wasn't long to work on it, but we gotta get this last one done. His first reaction there was, I was trying to go for the sweep, but he clears my foot and he tries to knee cut. I bump him, and then I just gave a little bit more of an advanced option. Get that butterfly hook in. You can use that to ensure the sweep occurs. Um, but realistically, once you get the sleeve, as I said earlier, it's, it's a done deal. So the other thing that can occur here, kicks it up past the sleeve, is that when I try and pull him back, he just straight up does this. So I'm pulling him this way to set the, the tension and the position for dumping him, and he just pulls straight back. So it's more he's fighting this. So I'm trying to pull him back, and he's just resisting. Okay? So what we're going to do is just chase that. Think like you wound up an elastic band, and then you let go from your side, and it goes that way. Okay? So again, I pull, he resists. So I pivot inside. Okay? My feet, if you just open up for a second, you go tall. So here, my feet were like this, and I was leaning here. So as I release, I'm falling forward in front of him. My heel goes to his heel. So think Achilles to Achilles. If you go deep in your knee here, it feels strong, but you ultimately kind of get yourself stuck, okay? So make sure that you have the ability to drive and roll over your shin. So one more time. We're just gonna end up going for a single. Kicks it up, past the sleeve. I try, I feel the resistance. I fall forward. 
Now from here, the most important detail with any of these single legs from De La Hiva, don't go up, go through him. So don't try and stand up to your feet. It's too heavy, all of his weight's here still, and he's still probably reacted back now. So I bulldoze him. I drive slowly forward until I can get all the way up to my feet. And then I keep this grip the whole time because it's useful. And then I just complete my single leg. And then we can release. Now, there is an earlier takedown there, which is just an ankle pick. As soon as I don't need my posting hand, I can use it to grab his ankle. Again, I pull, he reacts, so I go through and forward. Again, fall in front. And as I'm driving my way up, I go, oh, look at that. I just pick up his ankle, get an earlier takedown. Or, we think technical stand up, I drag my hip back aggressively, but I need to be putting some weight in. This isn't my go to, but it's definitely the fastest, fastest of the options here. So I pull, and then as I'm going here, instead I drag his ankle out. Okay? All the same essential position and way to finish. It's just how early you're attacking. Have the mentality that you're most likely going to get, end up all the way on your feet standing with a single. But if you can get that ankle, that's going to be likely. You can drag his ankle. Some guys are, will turn and step over your foot, or maybe they resist and you just continue to do it. Okay. Got it, guys? Hey, guys, time. Last one. Sorry, I'm always walking around. Okay, so just on that last one, because it still plays off the script set, you don't need the sleeve. It just means the sleeve just secures things, and we had other options with it. But you can, so if this was Nogi, all I would need is an ankle grip, right? Just to keep them secure, okay? Kicks it up, and then I can just fly into my single leg, okay? But if I have the sleeve grip, I can also just enter directly into it. It's just, it's likely you're gonna fumble this grip. So usually you'll go for a clamp grip and just kind of pin his wrist against the inside of his knee here. So you kicks it up, and then I charge forward as I pass the sleeve and I drive through. So you see my grip, I'm just holding onto his forearm. Or just don't worry about it. You have your grip to start with, kicks it up, and then just bail and come up. Okay, I've uh, mentioned this in the past. Um, for a lot of junior world championships, so it's like the 16, 17 year olds, um, there's a lot of guys that were like high school, like super, super high level wrestlers. Um, I guess they have D1 down there too. But, anyways, these kids were like blue belts but they've been wrestling their entire life and they figured out how to, because most jiu-jitsu guys just sit, they just pull guard and immediately negate any sort of advantage that they would have. So what they would do instead, and then also they'd have to deal with guard. So instead what they would do is they learned that they would pull the del Eva or to half guard and then just wrestle from there. So they would use this tactic all the time. They'd start a match, right? And then the wrestler guy would go here and then just immediately kick off and then go for his last, like, single leg, essentially. And then from there, he's already crushing halfway past the guard as he lands on top, and then now can play a top game. So it's a really, really good tactic um, for someone who wants to wrestle, but the guy isn't giving them a chance. You've got to be faster than you pull. Okay? Any uh, questions at all with this? Yeah? What if you can't grab the grip? What if you can't get the sleep? Yes. Is yeah. that it all goes up the door? Or, uh... Well, that's well. this is where we get into all our variations, right? So this is kind of, we'll save this for another lesson, but again, that's what will happen. It kicks it up, I want the sleeve, he grips his hand away. There's his belt. And I do a collar dump, but now he has two hands to post, so he's not going to immediately collapse, but I still can accomplish what I need to accomplish and finish my sweep. So the sweep all mimic each other, mm -hmm. it's just the grips change things subtly. Okay? We're going to go for the lapel. Or what, like, what we're going to end up doing next week is we're going to work off the cross grip, which is super frustrating for guys that, that like to pass down the heba because if I don't let them touch me with this hand, it's brutal to be in this position. Okay? But from here, if I kick, sit up, do the same entrance, and pass that sleeve, then we start to get into our little rotation sweeps and come on top. So again, the deli heba is endless as far as possibilities. The main battle in all of this is either load the weight or 
picks it up. If you can get there and can feel comfortable there, there are options upon options upon variations upon variations. So you can go to the shenanigans position. Okay? Alright guys. One, two. Rolling. Yeah. yeah. Alright guys. Um, we're going to just finish up with this leaf. We've got one more option I want to do. Uh, same from this grip set. So uh, like I said, there's a lot of the same sweeps over and over again. And what's nice though about you guys, what's hope, hopefully will be nice about you guys seeing how many similar sweeps there are, is that when you fight into these positions and you go for a grip and you miss it, that you'll know that you can go, oh, I can still do this. I just need to like pick up this grip instead or then just go through the motion. So we're gonna do that baby bolo again because we're going to have a very aggressive version for the cross grip on the sleeve later on, okay? So again, leg side grip, kicks it up, pass the sleeve over to the underside hand. But this time, instead of doing anything forward or attacking, I would use this to help pull myself underneath and set my block on the thigh. My hand is free because I passed the grip to grab. And now if he wants to turn back to me, even if I let go of that block here, this grip is doing a lot of resistance, okay? But obviously if I can get my foot in, it's better. So feed the, the uh, other butterfly hook in, pull yourself underneath. At this point, let go of the sleeve, do your extension, and take it. So again, kicks it up, pass the sleeve, and then just tip behind him. Use the script to kind of pull yourself in, and as you're transitioning, look to grab the belt, get the foot behind. And if you're dealing with flexibility issues, go up and around and behind. Okay, flick the foot in. Momentum definitely helps if you can't get it. Put yourself in, double up your grip if you want to, you can move far leg like we did before, but load his weight, knees to your chest with a little bit of tension up so you get his feet off, and then as you kick upwards, extend your legs away and direct him off of your body to sit in front. See belt moves. One last time. Kicks it up. Pass the sleeve, fall behind him, and in. Okay, the big risk whenever we get behind people is if you just kick up. Okay, this is a, <laughs> a weird way to get in position. Okay, again, is that if you just kick up, he falls on your face. Okay, so you need to make sure that you're holding back and you extend with that lift. Okay, fork lift arms. Okay, and try not to drop your partner heavy on this tail too. Okay? So last for this grip set. One, two. Let's go. Time, guys. Okay, sorry. Okay, one one adjustment. So ideally, you have the flexibility to, to tuck that foot in, but not everybody's there yet. Eventually, enough jiu-jitsu you'll develop these specific flexibilities. Um, but you, we have that foot, instead of flicking it over, we can also kick off the mat, okay? So again, same grips, kicks it up, pass the sleeve again from here. So if I'm feeling like, oh, I'm not gonna be able to get this foot in, I can always just kick off the mat, get behind him. And I, normally you should know that before you attack this position. Like hopefully you're not like, first ever competition, I'm gonna do the cool back take I've never done in training. You know, just practice the technique. So when you get to this point here and you pass that sleeve, like, and you get to this point here where I'm looking before you complete the tip over, as you're going, like, jump off the mat, grab his butt and kick off, okay? That way you force yourself to swing wide 